Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, uh, we're, we're kicking off uh, talking about the uh, decision and suspension of the DG of NIA and the SGF, Babacha Lawal. We are joined on the phone this morning by Mr. Okoye Bonobla, who is the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Prosecution. Good morning and thank you for joining us today. Uh, about, about this move, much as, yes, you have those who will say, okay, this has put uh, the anti-corruption war on track or in good light, but you have some others who will always have questions and reservations saying, uh, why did we have to wait this long before this decision was eventually taken? What yes, do you think about that? Concerning the, uh, from, uh, the suspended FGF, you know, the scandal broke out um, in about January, and shortly, uh, the president traveled for medical background. Um, the president came back on the 10th of March. You have remember before then, uh, the attorney general had written to the Senate saying that um, the investigation of um, the involvement of um, uh, B.D. Lawa uh, was inconclusive and that the president will not accept the request by the Senate to suspend him or to um, fire him because uh, he was not doing a fair hearing. So, so th that means the, uh, uh, the president has made good his promise that there was going to be a review of what the uh, former uh, attorney general did concerning uh, the involvement of uh, B.D. Lawa in the scandal. And the president has kept his words. And there was a huge celebration by Nigerians yes, on the social media. That means that the majority of Nigerians are overwhelmingly in support of the anti-corruption agenda of the administration of uh, President Mohamed Bouhari. So it's uh, fantastic. And that means that the president is in no, no nonsense that anybody, including me, who crosses the line, no matter how close you are to him, he will fire you. So it's a signal to all of us political appointees that we must key into the uh, anti-corruption agenda of, of government. Okay, Mr. Black, quite a number of people uh, who have spoken on the program and previously also think that, well, yes, indeed, we all need to fight corruption, but the modus operandi is what they examine and hope that it could be smoothened. About this suspension, for instance, they wonder why was, the, was there the need to set up a committee to look into this matter? Why wasn't it referred straight on to either the ICPC, the EFCC, or the police, for instance, because they have powers of prosecution? Well, there, there, there is what we call administrative law. That is not the first step in administrative law in public administration. You don't bring in the police into every matter because it is not every infraction that is a crime. So you have to take the first step. You set up an internal committee. The internal, the internal committee will review the allegation against uh, my airing public uh, servants. And then if they, they find any criminality, then the next step will be you place him on suspension or interdiction and then conclude the investigation. At the end of the day, if a committee, the committee finds him guilty of any criminal infraction, then the matter will be sent to the law enforcement agencies for investigation. You know that a, an administrative committee will not have power to investigate a crime. So but the, number, the first step usually taken is to set up a committee. So I believe that at the end of the day, if this committee finds uh, uh, find out that uh, any of them, the DIG or the SGF, have committed any criminal infraction, then the matter will be sent to EFCC, ICPC, or the police, as the okay. case may be. Interestingly, I mean, you're also in the office of uh, Minister of Justice, the AGF also connected to that. But many wonder... The involvement of the AGF in this one, because, I mean, the AGF had been part of a previous committee that had declared that, well, they found, uh, they had cleared uh, some officials of government that were sent to the Senate. But about this one, if, assuming, for instance, that the committee uh, doesn't see anything wrong with this or finds him guilty, it's still the office of the AGF that supervises many of these corruption agencies. So, is it a good move to have him in this committee at this stage? Yes, you know that uh, the, F, um, the AGF 
AG Health is the chief legal officer by virtue of the Constitution, Section 150, is the chief law officer, is the chief prosecutor. And you know, that is the only few office, that's the only legal office captured in the Constitution. So his, his role is very important. important. He supervises all the law enforcement agencies, they report to him. So there is, there's nothing wrong that uh, the AG this committee. Maybe there is something in that in the report of his committee that we need you know, the attention of this committee. So it is there, it's there to advise the committee on points of law. As I know that the vice president uh, is a senior law officer, he was a senior academic before coming into politics, but he's the vice president and the people who is vested with the power to advise the federal government on points of law is the AGF. So there's something unusual. The AGF being dry, drafted even though they think that, well, since you say also uh, reminds us that, yes, he's the chief law officer, chief prosecution officer, but this is not the prosecution stage. This is just the investigatory stage. But you still think that he should still be in this committee? Yeah, why not? Why not? I, I, because he was uh, privy to uh, investigator previously, and it was inconclusive. You remember, they told us that uh, that report was inconclusive because of certain issues. Need to be uh, further investigated. That, that, that's what the HGF told us. The, or the, the president told us it's better to be finished. You know, and that, that, that was it. And that's what we are in. But he has to be in this committee because there are certain issues or, 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 or facts he was privy to that will help this committee. There's nothing wrong with that. It's an administrative committee, purely administrative for now. Now, some people have all uh, discussed along the lines of having. Uh, cases such as this, high-profile uh, allegations to be investigated by independent uh, bodies. What do you make of that? Should we have an, invest, uh, an independent investigator to handle this? Yes. You know, if you look at the ICPC Act, there's a provision that the Chief Justice of Nigeria has the power to imp appoint independent counsel to investigate any uh, corruption allegation against a governor or president or any public officer. But that section of uh, the ICP Act, I think section 20, has not been activated. Uh, the last time uh, we, I, I, I asked the chairman of the ICPC, why is that uh, provision not being used? He told me that uh, about 10 years ago, a, a lot of cases were sent to the Chief Justice of Nigeria by FTPC, but the Chief Justice of Nigeria said that there was no monetary provision to appoint uh, independent counsel. Because if you appoint independent counsel, you have to apply them. So I agree with you that uh, as we continue to make progress, as we continue to fight corruption, there is need for sometimes independent counsel uh, to be appointed to investigate uh, public officers who have crossed the line. I agree with you. But you know, I have told you that the Chief Justice of Nigeria said there was no monetary provision for appointment of independent counsel. So maybe subsequently, the office of the TJN is vested with the power to appoint independent counsel. So make a request for budgetary provisions be made so that it can appoint independent counsel and pay them. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, the perception index of this kind of high-profile situation that we have. Uh, you said that people were jubilating over social media, uh, but we understand that this case hasn't gotten to that point of jubilation because it's, it's just on, at investigation uh, level. Well, you know, it's still at the investigation mean, level. There was an eruption of, 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 of displeasure when this issue came out for, uh, for the Senate and the uh, SGF was not placed on suspension, uh, you know, and seemingly it was cleared, you know, that, that was the uh, uh, insulation that he was, he was cleared because of the president wrote to the Senate that uh, the man was not with a fair hearing, that further investigation will be carried out. So I think that Nigerians are reacting to that. They, they, they love what they, uh, the government is doing. The government is fighting corruption, the coverage. The government is uh, blocking loopholes. For, for leakages, you know. So I, I think Nigerians are in, in, into the anti-corruption agenda of government. Do you think that uh, the president, or should I say the presidency now, would take its fight against corruption beyond just uh, its close officers? Yeah, well, with the, with the fight uh, against corruption has always been taken against everybody, not only close officers. But this, this is a signal to, to any person who is close to the president who thinks that he can cross the line that the, uh, the president will be looking. Uh, the 
complain about that kind of thing. He's very patient, uh, but eventually you eventually take action. I guess anybody who crosses the line this is uh, an indication of who the president is. Nigerians are not used to his style. Nigerians are used to those who take rash decisions. But it is not good that the president at his level, it is a serious former head of state, former military governor, former minister, a very serious person. should be taking rash decisions. So Nigerians, you are tuned to the style of President Mohamed Bouhari. We have not seen it yet today. All right. We, will come. we appreciate your talking to us this morning. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so there you go. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. Don't go away.